Howdy everybody out there in uh, Facebook land. Uh, my name is David Gross. This is Jeff Butler. We're with Condi and we're going to start calling this uh, sort of every Friday, even though it's a Thursday, we're going to call it Condi TV Live. So we'll be closed tomorrow for Easter and I hope everybody has an awesome Easter out there. We want to have a little fun and talk about some of the exciting things that will be coming your way. Jeff, pick something on the table and let's talk. All right, so what we have first is, is our acrylic is a big hit, and in order to get these into your hands so you can show your clients, we have a sample program. This is the actual piece that you'll get as a sample. We'll send these out to you pre-made, pre-bent. Uh, you'll be able to put it in your showroom, show your clients, uh, maybe put a one sheet out with the different sizes on it with different images. But a good way to get, get these pieces without having to buy the jig, buy the acrylic, um, it's ready to go. So a lot of folks have reached out to us over the excitement of the acrylic and said, sounds like a great product, but I'm not sure about it. You know, it sounds, sounds sort of hypey. You know, is it really as good as what people say? And so everybody of course asks for samples and that's of course to me is a wise thing so wanted to put together a sample showing you how good looking it is now let's go over the acrylic just for a second so you press it flat and then we have a little cooling jig that you put it in to to let gravity curve it so it's really cool and the best part of the acrylic is it's freestanding like this uh, put it on desk nightstand kitchen you name it um, and it's viewable from both sides, so it's gorgeous looking. And really, for the first time ever, you can sublimate the appearance of white. So the coating technology, we coated ourselves, um, is amazing. It's 100% USA made product, the acrylic, the coating applied here. It's cut here in the United States, and so it's amazing. You will see lots of new acrylic products coming your way, like keychains, luggage tags, um, ornaments, things like that. Jeff, so just ask your Condi rep to get you this sample. We'll put one in at no charge to ship with your next order. All right, next up we have our ever popular Brooklyn phone case. We have them now for the 7, iPhone 7, black and white, and the 7 Plus in black and white. This is our most popular phone case, the most protective phone case. It's a two-piece has a rubber inside, you put the phone inside, attach the back, has a Diflex insert. This is a hot phone case. This is a 20, 25, 30, $35 retail item. So let's talk a little bit about, so many years ago, uh, I helped design a phone case, ultimately called it Brooklyn after the old, old Air Force base that was in Mobile many years ago that my mother used to work at. And um, so I love that name, love Brooklyn, and so we made the case. The magic of this case is it is one of the most protective cases that I think you'll ever find for the sublimation world. So it's been very successful. I think we upped the game a little bit some years ago by starting to use the Diflex material, which we coat and cut ourselves. And that material, um, because it's, it's a plastic kind of material, doesn't interfere at all with the fancy antennas that are in an iPhone 7 phone. So you get maximum reception. And around here, especially at Condi, uh, reception is very challenging. So anything you can do to help. So these cases are out there. They're available from us. Um, they're easy to do. One tech tip, if you will, is that you need to press the insert correctly. If you do that, the insert shrinks a little bit so that it fits into the case. So need to do that. If you don't heat it enough, then it's 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 not going to fit quite right. Also, the the Diflex material is incredibly tough um, to withstand the the you know keys against it in a purse, things like that. So it really is a wise investment to do it. And the look of the Diflex, it has to me, it has really incredibly bold colors. Um, but yet has a slightly matte finish, so it's a really good thing. So available for seven, seven plus uh, phones. What else, Jeff? Um, we have a product pairing here, which is something that we highly recommend. 
uh, grouping and pairing products together. So we've got a personalized car tag here. Same with a nice design that Sprite did for us. We have the license plate frame. It's also aluminum. Same design. Works nice with that. We have a seat belt pad. Wraps around your seat belt. And a keychain. And there's several other products you could do in this same automotive product group line. Uh, just to give you some ideas, we thought we'd put that together and show you guys. So one of the challenges for all us digital decorators out there is if you work hard on some great looking artwork, like uh, some of these designs, and some of this is probably available at condidesign.com, you really want to maximize your profit opportunity on your hard work. And the best way to do that is to simply ask the client to buy another product with the same artwork on there. And so some people refer to that as bundling. It is a very wise strategy to offer with any client. One of my 101 tips and tricks for sublimation success out there that, that relates to this, there's a couple that sort of, sort of are close related, is that every product you produce needs to have your information on it, like on the back side, for instance, to let people know where they can buy this product. Um, who, you know, if somebody asks them, where'd you get that good, good looking product from? Um, at least there's a chance that they can find that out. So obviously, if it's mounted on your car, well, you know, not, not much of a chance there. But putting the information on the back of this tag does serve one big benefit, is that sooner or later, they're gonna want another tag. Uh, maybe because after a couple of years, stuff outside does fade. Everybody knows that. Well, when they take it off their tag, if they want to know, gosh, I can't remember who I bought it from, the information is on the back. And if you're smart, you'll, you'll date this tag so that you can keep up with, well, how long did it last? So on the Inisub stuff, uh, which is what I recommend, is it has a yellow peel code. That's the outdoor coating. You know, I would say that, that I'm very comfortable with 18 months. And so, you know, after that, people get bored, especially um, the number one buying demographic out there, which you know is uh, all the ladies out there. They're always looking for something new and exciting to, to um, personalize. So bundling is a really good opportunity. And you can just say, hey, I'm going to cut you a deal if you buy another product with it. I'll save you a little money. And, and ultimately, you, um, you give them a great package price. And guess what? If you do a good job with the artwork, what are they going to do? They're going to take everything they've got. They're going to show it to their friends. And you'll probably get more business out of it. So it all goes back to the, the fact that the product is worth what the artwork on it is. Isn't that right? Yeah, it's three, three, three things determine the value. The value of the underlying product you know, like a blank coffee mug. Number two is the artwork that's on it. And then number three is your selling environment. Do you focus and make yourself look like a flea market or are you making yourself look like a, an upper end boutique? Um, so, so the better you come across, the higher quality your artwork is, um, certainly the better opportunity you have to ask for that premium um, price on that. And I'll tell you this, if you undersell, if you underprice your products, um, that's probably the greatest damage you can do um, to the quality of your artwork and all that. People just tend to underprice stuff where, where people are looking for a personalized product, high quality, uh, you need to be up there. And, and folks that are interested in great looking products will pay it. Absolutely. Next up, we have our pinch books. These are a... Uh, this is a sneak preview it is. for folks out there. We have never shown this product before. We've been working on it for some time, and I think it's going to be a really big hit out there. Jeff, tell us about you, it. You uh, sublimate the front cover. All right, and the way it works is you actually, the, the, the spine of the book pinches the paper or photograph inside. Got some photographs there. Dave, stick those in. Yeah, I took these out of Tim Lynn's office, and... Um, and so this is such a cute photograph, and I remember when his kids were young. Would you just put them in here, and then, then it holds them in place like that. That's so. it. And we have this. This is a 4 by 6 It's another design. Um, and then here is the 8 and a half by 11 Went with a whole other orientation with that. It's got 8 and a half by 11 paper inside of it. 
Um, these are going to be hot. So how, what can you do with this product? I've, I've got a couple of ideas, but I'm going to rely on you folks to, to give me the winning ideas as the product gets into the marketplace. Number one is um, you can sell this to your client. It could be a special occasion, wedding, uh, but, but something that is, um, you know, something that's an occasion of life. Um, and they can take it home and using their inkjet printer, they can print the photographs and put them in. Hey, you can also print them for them. Um, so you've got lots of choices. You can also use this as sort of a personal record keeping uh, little pinch book. Um, keep those um, the receipts, um, all the kinds of paperwork that um, you want to keep around you. You stuff them into the book here, you can put in your car or keep it at home. So I think there's some great opportunities. Photo books are hot folks. Um, and so this is, we'll call it a darn good step towards the photo books. It's a beautiful handcrafted photo book, photo book on the outside, of course, the album. And I certainly would uh, recommend you take a look at it. Now you can, uh, even a small scrapbook, you know, they could put something together, use a scrapbook. I would, I would suggest going to your Hobby Lobby or Michael's or something like that and looking at the different papers um, and seeing what you can do uh, as far as, you know, stuff you can just pop in there and add photographs to or glue stuff onto. Uh, restaurant menus, different things like that. There's a million different uses. I'm sure you guys can come up with some great stuff. Uh, last on the product page we got here is our shout boxes. Um, what do I do with the insert? I, wonder. I had an insert with me. So. Oh, well. Yeah, this one has it affixed to it. This is another good one. Um, Thank you, Miss Bobby. So we have the frame, uh, which with this it, sort of a kit type deal. You have the frame, pre-made frame. You've got the insert, which you would transfer your image to, and then you affix it with uh, the E6000 glue is what Just we a, recommend. You know, gorilla grip, something like that, but something that's going to, you put a bead around it, something that's going to hold the um, insert to the frame. These things are, now, are the, extremely Now, the one we high. selected is a, it's a beautiful color, um, but we, you know, ultimately you're going to probably add more woods, even have more of a rustic look. Do you... Recall the name of the wood, Jeff. Uh, it's crab wood. It has a fancy name uh, and so starts with an A. Andorobin. Andorobin mahogany. Right. right. Also so, known as crab wood. That's what I call so, it. So at any rate, we've had it for a while around here as we we develop the product and um, we made love in the USA. Wood. Made in USA. So the um, the the wood is fabricated here. Obviously, the blank is here. I think the wood technically comes from somewhere in Central America. I, I forget exactly where. But we've really had a, um, we love this wood, we love the color. And yes, and so the name of the product is the Shout Box. So what can you do with the Shout Box? Well, it's for, for all the things you want to put. It's for wall decor. Um, I have a couple of them home that I did for prototypes. And one of them ought to take a picture of because it it's really funny is I did a narrow one for myself, and it will have more later, but I said it, it's, it's gross not to wash your hands, and I put it in the bathroom. And of course, for you that don't quite get it, my last name is Gross. So, um, you know, we come up with the, the sayings of life, and so whether it be a birth announcement, whether it be just a shout out that you're, you're making for your family, uh, you name it, I think it's an incredibly good product. And the best part is it's, it's really very cost effective. It's an inexpensive product, but I think it's going to be a, a very high value product. We've got a couple of great videos that are going to come out to teach you how to do it, but uh, talking about a no-brainer that you can start selling right away. So it's really cool. Yeah, and get creative with it. Add uh, rhinestones to it. Uh, maybe even guild at different things. You can do anything with it. But and we'll the, be the, running a contest. <coughs> excuse me, contest. I'm sure on our Facebook page to um, to get all the great ideas out there. But it's a hot product, and now you can get into the game. So Jeff, what got, else? Uh, that's it on the products. Why don't you give us a tip? So you know, um, got a couple of things want to cover, and then I'll get to come up with a tip. So you know, basically. I'm an engineer, and so engineers tend to be fairly conservative 
um, in you know pretty much the, everything they do maintenance wise on your vehicle you know you really want to do it great so things last a long time and uh, some years ago um, I came out with an extended warranty program for the old Ricos and it was a great program um, and and I really wanted to continue so I talked to the folks at Sawgrass and we worked a partnership with them to have what I call very cost-effective extended warranties for the SG400 and 800 program and pretty much I got everything I asked for and which is pretty cool uh, number one is I wanted it to be really low cost so on the 400 to add an extra year of warranty to your your your, your original one year warranty is is eighty dollars that's all it is and uh, for the SG800 uh, it is two hundred fifty dollars now if your printer fails in that second year they're gonna send you another printer and they're gonna send you another set of inks so it's a really good deal now is your printer likely to fail in the second year well you know life happens um, and so I hope it doesn't and so I tell everybody that when you're buying a printer uh, I would tell you to count on a three-year life yes you're you could get longer than three years but you know I'm saying you know because I've done this longer than probably anybody else three years is probably a good thing I talked to a lady this morning printer got struck by lightning you know um, so helping her but but count on that but this is is a really good stopgap measure to give you the extra warranty the other thing I asked Sawgrass for was I said well what if I've had my printer say for 11 months um, so it's just about out of that first year warranty can I buy the extended warranty and they agreed so we can sell you the the extended warranty for up to 11 months after you have bought your printer what a deal there so I think it's it's a, it's a good idea for the eighty dollars on the four hundred, but I'll tell you on the eight hundred, I think it's it's a clear winner. So um, you know consider that. If you have questions, call us and we can answer it. Um, let's see. Um, one of the, the the things that keeps coming up now we're going to choose a tip to talk about um, is is what color space should I design in and. Um, it's a complicated subject but the quick answer is I recommend everybody design in RGB um, in RGB you're going to get a broader color gamut than in CMYK um, and so that's the way you want to do it now if you've got artwork in CMYK you can convert to RGB and it isn't you're not doing a whole lot but you're doing some it will print correctly with the desktop printers the Windows and Mac architecture is really an RGB architecture that the the print drive architecture like on the Mac it's quick draw um, and on the the Windows it's uh, what we refer to as GDI graphic device interface those are really RGB interfaces and so you're going to be better off if you do that so by converting your colors um, you're doing a little bit of a good job but ultimately um, designing an RGB uh, really maximizes um, your color gamut. Does that mean you choose your colors from the RGB palette? No, it doesn't. Um, but it does mean that your canvas is RGB. So when you go file new, you'll see you know you've got a choice there. So for instance, I do uh, uh, do a fair amount of designing in Corel, but the same would apply for Illustrator. And so typically the the palette that I'm using like in Corel Windows color palettes you know there I, I like to use what's called the Pantone Go GOE you'll see it there Pantone Go I think has about 2,000 colors you know something like that so you can really paint the rainbow um, and we can show you how to make uh, your own um, color chart so you can print you do need to print a color chart sublimate it and then view your colors pick your colors from that so we can walk you through that process, especially if you're confused. Um, we put out a couple of videos that are great the other day. Uh, Jeff, on um, you help with that. Sprite did some videos for Corel. Some of the, the topics that I think everybody should know, like um, how to use the color palettes. And I think we did one on PowerClip. Mm -hmm. It's, it's condi.com slash 
Corel. Right, Condi.com forward slash Corel um, and so forth. So, so take advantage of those resources, but we can help you with, with designing. I mean, we are highly motivated to make you successful because, you know, if you're successful, then you can grow your business. Real quick on that note, how about the Photoshop users out there? So say that there's a difference in, in uh, you design an RGB. DPI. So you got what is your recommended uh, DPI for a hard substrate and a soft substrate? So, so resolution is one of those kinds of things that um, that takes some time to talk about because it's one of those confusing subjects. But here's how it goes. So when you take a picture, like um, I'm doing this video with my my iPhone, when you take a picture with your your camera phone or whatever, you're capturing a block of dots. And those, that block of dots doesn't have resolution. It's just a block of dots. It's like 2,000 dots going across and 1,000 dots going down. When you, say res, when you say print size, you then have resolution. So, so for simple math, you know, do this, is let's say I'm capturing 2,000 dots by 1,000. That's my block of dots. Let's say I want to print that. Um, and I want to print it 20 inches across by 10 inches down. You know, that, that's, that's how I want to print it. Well, then it becomes 100 dots per inch. So if you divide 2,000 by 20, um, you'll get that 100, uh, if I did my math correct. And so that tells you the resolution. So when we speak of resolution, you really only want to speak of it in terms of what is the print resolution. Um, because, you know, at, at, at the print size is what counts. So the rules that I've come up with after all these years, these are sort of minimum kind of resolutions. Is for a hard substrate, we want to be at least at 200 dots per inch for a hard substrate. For a soft substrate like a shirt, mouse pad, uh, we really want to be at 150 dots per inch or greater. So the graphics art standard out there is, is 300 dots, and that's great. Do it. But, but ultimately, you don't control resolution really and truly because you're simply resizing that block of dots. So if you don't have enough resolution, then you really can't pull resolution out of thin air. You know, the programs sort of pretend like you can, but you can't. Um, and so if you take something with a little old camera phone that's almost no dots, you're not going to be able to blow that up to anything acceptable with quality. Now, um, I think I've covered on maybe the last Condi TV, we talked a little bit about uh, the perfect resize software from ononesoftware.com, O-N-O-N-E software.com. They have a great product. Um, I have used it for many years. It's called Perfect Resize. It's probably bundled with one of their other products now. But what that does is, Bobby's trying to give me a tip here, what? They've come out with a new version. We released it yesterday or the day before. It's called Perfect Raw. Perfect Raw. And On One has changed their logo to On One. Okay. We'll put links so in, the, we'll, in we'll, the comments. So we'll clarify <laughs> that. But at any rate, um, when I used it years ago, 20 years, it was called um, Genuine Fractals. Great product. So what is that? Why am I talking about it? Well, it's sort of the band-aid that when you run out of resolution, and let's say you're doing a mural, you're doing something large, and the person says, here's my money, print it anyway, then you can do the best professional job by what's called resampling the image. Um, and, and this kind of software, basically when you use it, it, it sort of figures out if I had more resolution, what would it look like? And so it's it's... It's not to be done normally, you know, you use it when you have to, um, other stuff. And you can call us and we can tell you a little bit more about it. But um, perfect resize is what I call it from the on one software um, uh, folks out there. So um, just to recap, design an RGB, uh, hard substrates, 200 DPI, output print, soft substrates, 150, and should be good to go. Yeah, trying to think of any other tap. Um, it, in the uh, non-sublimation world with transfer papers for inkjet, for color laser, these are the kind of transfer papers that have the brands of Nina and uh, Forever. Um, those are now all 
uh, free shipping for ground shipping in the in the 48 states. So that's a great bargain for folks out there. In the in the t-shirt transfer world, um, the uh, Nina inkjet paper called the uh, Jet Pro Soft Stretch, excellent inkjet paper. Um, you know, I most, mostly hang out, of course, on the sublimation world, and that's where uh, folks out there should take advantage of the Reveal S um, sublimation film. So that film, if you search our videos, that film is going to be used with your sublimation printer, and it's going to allow you to transfer to white and light-colored cotton shirts using what I refer to as medium to bold colors. So the Reveal is a, is a good product for, for most folks, for most graphics. Um, what its weaknesses are, it's not going to do photographs very well uh, because in the very, very light areas, the film will not activate. Um, but I tell you, it's a great product. The trick to using Reveal is to um, calibrate your heat press. Um, the sweet spot for Reveal is it's 385, 18 seconds, heavy pressure with nothing on top, and hot peel. So we can go through that. By the way, we ship uh, sample packs of Reveal now with the uh, printer. So you buy 400, 800, you're going to get a 10-sheet pack of the Reveal. And we do, we do have videos and we have extensive documentation. We have a, Correct. an instruction booklet and as well as we have it in uh, Spanish. Just got everything translated. Doug has that. So, and be on the lookout for Doug uh, in the next week or so. He should. I know he's got some new transfer papers coming. Um, he's got a new print system coming. So we'll There's we'll stay on Doug. Things. There, there um, is. And you can get to see Jeff and I in in actual person to person training at the NBM shows. So if you Google NBM shows, that's Nancy Boy Mary Sorry. shows. Yep. Yeah, you can see. You can sign up for one of our classes, and as far as I know, it's all free, so the price is right. You get what you pay for, right? Absolutely. And uh, we have a lot of fun. Come down to the booth and see the, uh, the sublimation kiosk running. We've got a fellow asking a question. Rich Hansen wants to know, why would you design an RGB when the output will be CMYK? So I knew questions like that, so let me repeat the question. It says, why would I design an RGB when I own a CMYK printer? And the, the point is that the Windows and Mac print system is expecting an RGB file. It really does not support CMYK, and so, so it needs to be RGB. Now, what happens is when you feed the driver, if you will, a, a wide color gamut file like an RGB because you can get the most color gamut with RGB, uh, especially if you use a, a better working space like Adobe RGB 98. But when you feed it, then the driver then converts it to the printer's CMYK color space. The printer's CMYK color space is, is not anything like the, the CMYK color space that you would design in if you were doing that. Mostly in CMYK, we would design in swap coded, something like that. That is a very small gamut color space compared to the CMYK color space of the printer. So the trick is design something with the largest color space you can so that when it does go through the driver and then is, like you pointed out correctly, is converted to CMYK, that you're, you're maximizing the, the, the color gamut that is being fed to the CMYK color space. And so I know that's sort of strange and, and what I said, but the bottom line is that if you do that. Now if you really, I'll throw you one curve, if you were to look under the hood of like Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, or Corel, um, the color space that actually is running all the color engines is what we call lab color space. And so lab color space is the ultimate uh, space uh, for, for the, the, the best results. But, but there, people just don't design in lab color space. So every time you open a document, RGB or CMYK, the, the engines in, in the Corel and Illustrator, they're doing this conversion. They'll push it to lab, they'll pull it back to um, RGB so that, that um, it's doing the best job it can with converting and displaying uh, your artwork.
Any other questions, Bobby? Well, uh, Stella says hey. <laughs> And that's it. Hey, Stella. Good to hear from you. <laughs> I'm glad you're with us here uh, on this uh, Thursday. I keep thinking this is a Friday. Uh, Thursday, Friday. We are close today. We are close tomorrow. And um, as always, I welcome your, your feedback. Bobby, is there another? Do you have a chart that shows RGB to CMYK conversion? Ideally, I need to match Pantone colors. That's why I start in CMYK. Okay. So, uh, let me repeat her question. It says, ultimately, I'm trying to match Pantone colors. So, the way to do it is, is actually straightforward, and there's only one way that I know of to do it. So, first is, you buy you a Pantone book. Now, the book you want to buy is what's called a Pantone Solid Coated Uncoated Book. That's the book you want. Art Supply Store, they're relatively expensive, but if you want to play the Pantone game, that's what you have. Next is, you want to print a color chart um, that is appropriate for our world of process colors. The one I like is called Pantone Go. Now it was created, I think, my opinion, to solve the problems that we're, we're talking about today. So it is a process color palette. It is an incredible number of colors, about 2,000 from what I remember. And what you're going to do is you're going to build a swatch color chart. We can show you how. And you're going to print that chart, and you're going to sublimate it. Then when you want a Pantone color in your artwork, you're going to go grab your book, find the Pantone color in the book, match it to the chart, find the color at the chart that matches, and then reopen the chart in Corel or Illustrator and find that color on the chart and paint with it. If you do that, you'll nail it every time. And it's a marvelous technique because as, for instance, let's say you're using a substrate that renders color a little bit different, you're going to print the chart on the, on the substrate. It could be a different kind of fabric or whatever. And, and you're going to see how the colors render. So you're no longer going to be guessing. There's no quote, quote, conversion from RGB or CMYK. You're printing a large color palette. In this case, I like the Pantone Go. You're going to sublimate it. Then, using your book, you're going to find the color that your client has requested in the book. You're going to find it on the sublimated chart. You're going to go back, reopen the chart, find that color, and paint with it. it to me, it is a perfect way to do it and it really doesn't take a long time to do it. Now, if your artwork has a gazillion colors, well, it gets a little painstaking, but ultimately um, that is the method you want to use. Now, if you were to go in and just design with Pantone colors, like a Pantone solid coated color, um, our profile does actually a pretty good job of matching it, and so it's certainly not an embarrassment. But if your client is specifying a Pantone color, they're expecting the correct color. You can't go to them and say, well, this is close, I hope. I hope it's good enough. That's not, that's not going to work. That's not going to fly. You need to nail it. You're a professional out there, nail it. So, for instance, another example would be, let's say that um, you're trying to match a school color. Well, you need an article from the school. It could be a shirt, whatever. You hold it up against the chart. You match the color. And if you do that, you're going to be a professional. There are rel relatively few people out there that know how to do it right, and if you're the one that's, that's matching their colors, then you're going to get the business, you're going to get the accolades. It's a simple way to, to really outdo the other guys, because like you said, not everybody's going to do that. Jeff, run out that's there, the... run out the, Bobby, run out yeah. there real quick and get my, my chart. I, I know where it is. It's right there by the, the TV, yep. I think. Now we have these call your account manager because we, we can provide these charts to you to print, but, sublimate. Yeah, I think what we'd like to do is show you how to generate your own chart yep. um, so that you can, you can customize it for what size of paper you want to use, that kind of thing. So I hope Bobby's coming back with a chart or we're going to be, ah, here she is. So I made this chart um, and, and again it's just a demonstration of, of what you want to do. So you can see the variety of colors in it. Um, so I built this chart with the, the macro that is built into Corel. That's how I built it. Um, and so it's just, it's a very complete chart. So I believe Pantone obviously knows a lot about, more about color than I will ever know. 
but I believe this was their attempt to bridge the gap with a solid color, that being a color in a bucket, and moving to the computer environment for process color. Now remember, the Pantone solid standard, which is what corporate America specifies colors, predates the computer by a long ways. And so you're not going to get good results or perfect results by, by choosing the Pantone solid colors in your application. You might ask why they're there. Well, they're there for like screen printing and for, for a printing press where you're going to pour that color ink into it. Any other? Um, what does Wasatch SoftRip do that Corel doesn't do? So the question is, what is a Wasatch SoftRip um, and what can it do for us? So when you have big printers, um, like a 44-inch printer or, say, our new, uh, the VJ628 or the RJ900X, these are 24-inch uh, and 44-inch printers. Um, there is not an architecture in the Mac or PC driver that really is powerful enough to run these printers at their rated speed. So we need dedicated software that you run to open images and print. So, so think of uh, a company, and they've got one desk in the company. The graphics artists design stuff, and then they print. Well. Let's move to a two-desk company where you still got the graphics artists, they're designing stuff, but now after the graphics artist finishes, they take that artwork and move it to the second desk, and that's the production operator. And so that production operator would drive the printer with a software rip like Wasatch, and they would open the jobs in there, they would nest them on the page so you save paper, and then they would print them. And so, so Companies like Wasatch and SoftRip are just absolutely essential for driving the bigger printers um, at the RAID speed, and they have all sorts of print productivity features in them that, that save you money. You know, use paper, use less paper, and all that. Now, we don't need or benefit very much from having a software rip on the smaller printers. Um, it's just not going to be that valuable. It's not going to be helpful. It's just you know wasted money, and so with the with the small printers, um, there generally is not a software rip available. Although I've certainly thought about it and we've worked on it and prototyped it, but there's just not not a great great benefit. Now, if the printer does something weird uh, and unusual, like has some extra ink channels that are spot colors, fluorescence, or whatever, you you have to drive it with the software rip because the software rip is going to interpret your artwork and you're going to tell it, hey, this is fluorescent colors over here and it pushes that to the proper ink channel. So software rips have their place and so if you're looking at buying um, say an Epson, large format Epson printer, uh, the, the MUTO printers, then we're certainly going to, going to strongly recommend that um, you use Wasatch. Wasatch is um, my favorite rip. Any other questions, Bobby? Um, Ms. Walker says that the uh, Pantone website says that the Go system was discontinued in 2013, but we have color charts for them that they can Okay, use. so Wasatch, uh, the, the company, the question is, what about Pantone Go? So what I have to do is, is look at what is built into the software today, okay? And, and the Pantone Go is built into Corel. In fact, it, it, it's been built in since um, X5. So, so it, Corel X5 was when Pantone introduced it. So whether it's discontinued or not it doesn't mean anything to the sublimation world because it's in Corel X5, X6, X7, X8, and the new version, by the way, I think is getting close to coming out. So, so it's there. Um, it doesn't really matter. I think the Pantone company, just my, my educated guess, is they're really fashion-oriented, so they're going to kill one standard, bring out a new one, try different color things here and there. Um, and so that's not really um, strongly related to how we design. Now, every version of Corel that comes out, for instance, I am looking in there to see what new palettes there are. 
many, many years ago, before X5, for instance, I recommended um, called TrueMatch, T-R-U-M-A-T-C-H. And that was the best standard that I thought of in Corel. Now, if people out there that know a whole lot more than I do have a different opinion about what palettes they think are good to design with, I absolutely look forward to speaking with you. But if somebody said, what's a great palette in a modern version of Corel that has a bunch of colors um, that, that really prints nice, um, I'm going to look in there and I'm going to say the, the Pantone Coded Go. I think that's how it's run in there. So I did know that, that Pantone, quote, quote, stopped support of Pantone Go some years ago. But I can tell you that it's still in every version of Corel from X5. I like it. I think it works great. And I would recommend you take a look at it. Um, last question, they want to know uh, when they can expect the shout dots, the bottle openers, and um, the playing cards. Ah, the, the playing area. cards. So <laughs> the, um, the shout boxes, I think we will be shipping them Monday or Tuesday. Any day. So um, very, very close. The um, Bottle openers any day. Bottle openers, I think probably we're, we're a week or two weeks out, but we're, we're getting real close to that. And then the playing cards, I'm not positive to give you an answer on the playing cards. Uh, aren't the playing cards cool? Um, they are. They're, they're really a neat product. So um, I hope this has been, been helpful for you. Thank you for your feedback. Um, please uh, send us a message on Facebook or, or email us. Um, we look forward to working with you. And thank everybody out there for being a uh, client. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. And, and especially thank everybody out there for their great ideas. Um, being an engineer, not the cre most creative person, and uh, you folks are just awesome. So thank you. Be safe. Happy Easter.